Chapter 2 Bats Everywhere Bruce couldn't sleep that night. He remembered his life after Joe Chill killed his parents. He was so unhappy and so angry. He went from school to school and university to university. He never stayed long in one place. Bruce is 20. He is going back to Gotham by train. Alfred meets him at the station. On the way to Wayne Manor, he sees that everything is different. Everywhere is dirty. Many houses are empty. Many shops are closed. People are sleeping on the streets. Things are very bad in Gotham now, Master Bruce, Alfred tells him. But Wayne Manor is still your home. Your father was a great man, and one day you will be a great man too. It is the afternoon on the same day. Bruce is sitting on his bed. Joe Chill will be free today, he thinks. He killed my parents twelve years ago, and today I'm going to kill him. He takes a gun out of his bag. His old friend Rachel comes to the house. She is an assistant district attorney, an important lawyer in Gotham now. Wow, he thinks when he sees her. She is so beautiful. They drive to the prison. Why are they freeing Joe Chill today, he asks. When he was in prison, he was in a room with Carmine Falcone, the famous criminal. Rachel explains. They talked, and he learned lots of things about Falcone. He's going to give that information to the police. They arrive outside the prison. The newspaper people are waiting. Joe Chill comes out. There are police all around him. Bruce gets out of Rachel's car and walks towards Chill. He has his hand in his pocket on his gun. But, suddenly, a blonde woman pushes through the people. She runs up to Chill. She has a gun in her hand. Falcone says, hi, Joe, she shouts. Bang, bang. She kills Joe Chill. Joe Chill was dead, but Bruce didn't feel better. It wasn't the answer. Ducard took Bruce's blue flower. He pulled the dry flower into little pieces and made a small fire with it. Smell your flower now, he said to Bruce. Bruce put his nose near the smoke. The smell was terrible. He suddenly started to remember the worst days of his life. He was falling down the well. He was seeing his parents' blood in the street. You are frightened of these things. Look at them. Fight them. Now, said Ducard. He pointed to a large wooden box. Bruce opened it. Whoosh! Hundreds of bats flew out of the box. Bruce wanted to shout and run, but he didn't. No, he thought. I must be strong. He stood there quietly. He didn't move. He didn't say a word. Well done, said Raj al Ghul. You are not frightened now. You are ready to join my ninjas. He gave Bruce a light. Take this light and give your life to me. Bruce took the light. Where must I go with your men, he asked. To Gotham, answered Raj al Ghul. Gotham must die. You must kill all the people there. No, shouted Bruce. This could not be real. We have taught you many things, said Raj al Ghul. Now you must do this for us. I won't do it, shouted Bruce. He threw the light on the wooden floor. It broke, 
A fire started and moved quickly around the room. It grew and grew. It reached the boxes of explosives in the cupboards. They started to explode. Bang! Bang! Ninjas ran everywhere. The roof started to fall. It fell on Raj al Ghul and killed him. As Bruce ran to the door, he saw Ducard's body on the floor. He wasn't dead. Bruce pulled Ducard out of the building and into the snow. He pulled him down the icy mountain. Ducard was very heavy. Once, he almost fell over the edge of the mountain, but Bruce saved him. After some time, they came to some houses. Bruce left Ducard with an old man there. You saved his life. I will tell him, said the old man. Where are you going? I'm going home, said Bruce. Bruce walked down the rest of the mountain. He phoned Alfred. I need you, Alfred, he said. Please come and get me. Alfred flew to Bhutan, in the Wayne family plane, and took Bruce back to Gotham. He told Bruce all about the terrible changes in Gotham. Carmine Falcone was the crime boss in the city now. Everyone was frightened of him. And William Earl sat in Bruce's father's chair at Wayne Enterprises, the Wayne family business in Wayne Tower. Bruce Wayne is dead, Earl told everyone. I'm the boss now. Bruce listened carefully to Alfred. I'm going to save Gotham, Alfred, he said. When they arrived home at Wayne Manor, Bruce saw a small black thing high on the wall. What's that, Alfred? he asked. It's a bat, sir, answered Alfred. There are lots of bats around here. Bruce suddenly ran out of the house. He ran to the well in the garden and climbed down and down. He reached the floor. It was very dark, but he could feel a cold wind. He found a hole in the wall and climbed through. He could hear water. It was quite near. He followed the black walls until they opened into a big cave. A river ran through the cave, and everywhere there were bats. Hundreds and hundreds of bats. Bruce smiled. The next morning, Bruce put on a new suit and went to Wayne Tower. The woman at the front desk at Wayne Enterprises tried to stop him. You can't go in there, she said. They're having a business meeting. But Bruce opened the door and went in. There were a lot of men sitting around a long table, and at the end of the table was William Earl. Good morning, Mr. Earl. Good morning, everyone, said Bruce. Earl's face went white, but he quickly tried to smile. My boy, how nice to see you, he said. You're back. What a surprise. A nice surprise. I've come back to work here, said Bruce. I want to learn the family business. Bruce started work in the Applied Sciences office. This was the new ideas office, but Wayne Enterprises didn't seem to be very interested in new ideas these days. The only other person in the office was Lucius Fox. Lucius was a friend of Bruce's father before he died. Bruce looked around the big room. It was full of strange and exciting things. What's this? he asked and pointed to a black suit. It's a bodysuit, said Lucius. It can stop a knife. It can even stop a gun. Can I have it? asked Bruce. Of course, said Lucius. All these things are yours anyway. Bruce took the bodysuit home and down to the cave. Soon, he thought, 
I will be ready.